Hey, what's up everybody? Proper here, and today, first off, you might notice the background change. Uh, I am in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, visiting friends and family on vacation, so yeah, it's uh, it's been a great time so far. I just flew in yesterday, and uh, speaking of yesterday, uh, I also saw a movie called Yesterday, <laughs> and uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about that. First, uh, before I get into it, I just want to say this will be a spoiler review. I'm not going to get into it until about uh, two minutes in, so don't worry about that. So, this movie is about uh, a guy named Jack Malik, and he's a struggling musician. He's like, has this manager that he's had for, I don't know, about, they've known each other for 10, 20 years or something like that. They grew up together. She's always been the one person who's been 100% supportive of him and his dream after a, a couple of not so great gigs. She's dropping him off uh, somewhere and then he rides his bike the rest of the way home. I don't know why, but he does. And then he gets hit by a bus uh, after there's a power outage for uh, across the whole globe for 12 seconds somehow. And then when he gets back home, uh, he wakes up the next day and nobody remembers the Beatles. The Beatles never existed and oddly enough a couple other things don't exist as as a result. For some reason Coca-Cola doesn't exist anymore, which is weird. Cigarettes don't exist anymore. I don't know why they don't pre-exist the Beatles at all. Harry Potter doesn't exist anymore for some reason. It's just astounding to me. When he discovers this he takes this opportunity after he plays a song called Yesterday which is seen in the trailers and he's just like Wow, like nobody's heard of the Beatles before? It's like, oh, maybe that's a great way to make my career just take off. Just take all the Beatles songs and credit it as just me writing it. He goes on and he gets, uh, he gets more famous, he gets the attention of uh, Ed Sheeran and a lot of stuff happens there. Ed Sheeran is uh, very, very great in this role uh, playing himself, which is not too difficult. But, you know, you see, you see pretty decent moments of acting uh, from him. Uh, there's a point where, uh, hey, like we're both gonna go in a room for 10 minutes, whoever comes up with the best song in 10 minutes uh, wins. And uh, of course, Jack plays a, a long winding road and so he wins and you see on Ed Sheeran's face just his disappointment and just how it's just like, wow, this guy's so much better than me, like, wow. This is this is incredible. The amount of fame that he gets, like it's this is basically a romantic comedy, but it's not. But it's kind of wrapped up in a Beatles present. It's one of those typical things, like oh, you never noticed me all these years. It could have been a lot more well put together, in my opinion. Um, I don't think that it was as executed as great as it could have been, but it was still believable. I still had fun, and you know, it was just it's a fun concept. In all honesty, this movie. Here's the big twist. So this is a big spoiler in the film. At some point, there are, are two people, two extras, who are just kind of like in the background. They hold up a yellow submarine. So it's so you don't know exactly what these people are gonna do, and eventually they go up and meet Jack Malik. These two people, they're like older and they both remember the Beatles too. You think they're about to expose him and say like wow why like how dare you do this. I guess they woke up in that same mindset just like wow the Beatles didn't exist either. So there are a couple other people who are in the same boat. They just go up to him and say thank you. They say thank you because we can't I can't imagine a world without the Beatles and but yet here we are. And that was something that was surprising to me. Uh, it was surprising to my friend who was with me uh, last night. It was just very, uh, was very moving in my personal opinion. I don't know where they got the yellow submarine from, <laughs> but because I'd imagine that'd be hard to find, uh, you know, just if it was because it looks so much like uh, the yellow submarine from the Beatles cartoon. So it's just it's just odd that they were able to do that. But that being said, there's one scene in particular that really got to me. Right after those two people uh, go off and they uh, tell them thank you, uh, there is a scene where he's given an address and he goes down to this beach side. It's kind of an isolated place and he knocks on the door and guess who opens it? John Lennon. John Lennon and that that was a moment for me where I was just like Wow. Well, I mean, it made sense first off because, you know, it'd be very expensive to get Paul or Ringo to be in the film, but this part of the film is where it makes me not, you know, want to just recommend to go see this movie right now. But it's a scene that could have done that. So what happens is he just knocks on the door and just talks to him. And 
John is just very inviting. He just gives him a light lesson of just, uh, you know, do what makes you happy. You know, uh, like, are you happy doing what you're doing? You're ha happy with your love, your relationship, or something along those lines. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to go watch it again to hear exactly what he said, because it was, his uh, dialogue was a little hard to hear sometimes, which is kind of strange. Uh, but something was missing to me there. And first off, you know, I honestly think that it should have been somewhere along the lines of him just being like, first off, how did you find me? Who? So anyways, um, the John Lennon scene was one of those scenes where I thought it was a missed opportunity because I think a lot more could have been done with it. Um, it seemed like it was you know, a very shocking moment, but it was kind of underwhelming. I wanted something a little bit more. Kind of like what the message was, what it was trying to uh, entail, what it was trying to give is, you know, do what you want, you know, love who you want, you know, if something isn't making you happy, stop doing it. Even if it's something that you're very successful at and it's something that's getting you a lot of money, that's not all there is in the world. And, you know, even though John didn't have, uh, in this universe, he didn't have the the whole fame and the fortune, everything that goes with it, he still had a life that was fulfilling. He had a life that he was happy with. And it really focused on, I guess because it was, he was, uh, 78 in the is what they said in the film and then Jack Mal is just like oh my gosh you made it to 78 and he, he hugs him and he's just like okay uh, <laughs> he just lets him hug him he's just because he's, John's a very peaceful guy um, in general and especially in this film uh, that uh, the older uh, hippie kind of John Lennon uh, from like the 70s was uh, kind of a where I guess that's where they had to build off him. I know I'm talking about this a lot and I'm focusing on this scene a lot, but this is the scene that it just really seemed like it missed an opportunity just to just really drive the movie home. Um, because after that, it's just like he plays the concert and then at the end, he's just like, hey, I took it from these four guys. They're called the Beatles. And even though nobody's heard of them and they're not even on Google anymore, you can't Google search them exactly. <laughs> what was weird about that is that they just, uh, uploaded uh, the entire out like they were making this big album which is like kind of like a Beatles soundtrack if you will but it was all recorded by Jack um, by the way I would love to get that soundtrack by the way because uh, the covers were really well done they just released released it all for free for everybody to hear because everyone deserves to hear about the Beatles and know about their music and what was interesting about the film too that I really liked is when he was trying to remember some of the songs, like Sgt. Pepper, uh, he had to go to the locations where, uh, he had to go to Strawberry Fields, he had to go to Eleanor Rigby's grave um, to try to get the images in his head, the, the words in his head to remember it. Because sometimes, you know, when you're remembering music or something there, you know, you, you remember the music pretty well. Uh, but you, you, it's very hard to remember all these, these hundreds of Beatles songs, you know. And I like how they, <laughs> there was one song, I forget what it was, uh, like uh, it was like a summer song or something. I, I forget what the song was, but I guess that was a joke of the movie. It's just uh, they're like, yeah, I, I don't like it, but I don't know why <laughs> from Kate McKinnon. Oh, but, and, and also Kate McKinnon did a fantastic job. Also, Kate McKinnon did a fantastic job. I think she stole the show for me a couple of times. She really, uh, definitely not a, uh, a three-dimensional character whatsoever. Very, uh, you know, one beat. But she was entertaining in that role, and she did exactly what she was, you know, supposed to do. And exactly what the movie required her to do, and she knocked that out of the park. Um, you know, this is just... Uh, a record executive who just wants to take advantage of the talent and is just all in it for the money, all in it for the wrong reasons. And um, honestly, you know, I think she did a great job with that. And she was a little over the top, which is exactly what you would expect uh, Kate McKinnon to do. And she did an excellent job. The James Corden scene, uh, they cut out uh, something and uh, they kind of replace it with like, you know, every now and then uh, Jack has these sort of like dream sequences or something like nightmare scenarios of uh, uh, like that scene where Paul McCartney and George uh, not Paul McCartney Paul and Ringo are coming into the James Corden uh, set on the show they're just like oh surprise we have some people who claim it's their music that's just a sort of a dream sequence but yes uh, in the film he's set to appear on the James Corden show but I don't know exactly what part of it was his actual appearance or what part of it was just the dream sequence. That that line kind of blurred a little bit. Uh, 
but uh, I think that could have been a little bit more smoothly. But overall, I think if you're a Beatles fan, you will love this film. Uh, it was, for me, and my friend who went with us, it's just, uh, it was a little underwhelming. The premise is fantastic. Uh, the execution could have been a little bit better, but for anybody else who has seen it, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this video, go ahead, hit that like button. And if you didn't like this video, go ahead, hit that dislike button. My feelings will not be hurt. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. And uh, thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.